Amen. Let's turn our attention to what the Spirit of God is wanting to tell the churches. In fact, we have got into a place of laziness. We have got into a place of lethargy. We have got into a place where we are actually looking and focusing on things within the four walls of our home because this pandemic has altered our perspective of what is to come. And so the Spirit of God is wanting to shake us out of where we are and He is telling us to go beyond where we are to grasp what the Spirit is wanting to do in this world, in this city. Pandemic is coming to an end. I believe, I believe that God will protect us from onslaught of another wave that, that, that is threatening across the world. But God is going to give us grace to break through and overcome. And it is not what we are getting used to in this season. We got to move out and receive the passion that is needed for our life in order to do what God is calling us to do. And I want you to turn your attention to Romans and chapter 12 this morning, speaking to you on a living a life of passion. Romans chapter 12 verses 6 down to 11. Romans chapter 12 verses 6 down to 11. Can we all read it together? We have what? Come on, everyone. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then what? Teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another. Honor one another above yourself. And the final important thing that God as the Spirit wants to deliver to the churches this morning is that never, come on everyone reading together, never be lacking in what? zeal. Come on everyone once again. Never be lacking in zeal but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. All of us are called. All of us have been gifted. Everyone is called to be the hands and the feet and the eyes and the face of this God. And each of us have been gifted differently. Some of you with gifts of prophecy, prophesy. Some of you serving, serve. Some of you leading, lead diligently. But in all of this, God is expecting us to love, honor one another, love one another. And finally, He says, don't give up on the zeal, the spiritual fervor, the zeal of the Lord that God has put within us. In fact, the Spirit of God is fire and this fire has come upon us and this fire has, is burning within us. And while this fire is burning within us, we can't be laid back. That's the problem of this pandemic. What it has made us do is that we have become a little laid back. We initially was, were a little frustrated and agitated with all this lockdown that were happening. But after a period of time, we have got used to a particular lifestyle where we are just thinking about the four walls because everything is comfortable. Everything is cozy within the four walls. We are able to do and we are able to manage things within the four walls. And therefore, we are having a laid back life that is lacking the passion and the fervor that God wants His church to have. Therefore, we got to develop this passion. We got to get back to the spiritual fervor. We have a lot of things to be done outside. It's wise to stay inside. Yes, we have done that. It's wise to be protective. Yes, we have done that. Yes, it's wise to actually make sure that you and your family have enough finances. Yes, you've done that. But it's time for us to break free and receive that passion and that burden and that zeal once again to serve Jesus Christ. Are you here with me? If you're here with me, would you lift up your hands and say a big hallelujah. How can I develop this passion? I have four important things that I want to share with you this morning that the Spirit of God has laid in my heart. 
He wants this for the church. He just does not want this for New Life Assemblies of God. He wants it for the churches of the living God. He wants the spiritual fervor to rise up. This fire once again burning within us that makes us do what He wants us to do and not be laid back and not withdraw. The first thing that you and I need to allow is to allow the Spirit of God to stir this passion, to stir the zeal. Allow the Spirit of God to stir this passion and zeal. When Nehemiah heard the news that entire Jerusalem is in ruins, they went back, but now the walls of Jerusalem are all broken down. The remnant is not able to really cope up and is not protected. Something happened within his heart that shook him. And therefore he prayed and fasted for several days and the Spirit of God stirred within Nehemiah's heart. You got to do something about the broken walls of Jerusalem. If you come to Prophet Haggai, Haggai is talking about the remnant of Israel who have gone back after the exile. Now, now the temple is in ruins, but people are still thinking only about building their own homes. And let's read from Haggai what the prophet Haggai said to the remnant of Israel who had come back from exile. And let's read Haggai chapter 1 verse 3 and 4 and then verse 14. Are you ready? Can we all read it together? Haggai chapter 1, 3 and 4 and then verse 14. Then the word of the Lord came to the prophet Haggai. Is it a time for you yourselves to be living in your paneled houses while this house, which is God's house, remains a ruin? Is it time for you to yourself to be living in your paneled houses while this house remains a ruin? So the Lord, verse 14, can we all read it together? So the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and the spirit of Joshua, son of jo Jehoshadak, the high priest, and the spirit of the whole remnant of the people. They came and began to work on the house of the Lord Almighty, their God. When they saw the problem, this late backness to panel their own homes and settle their own homes. And God spoke through the prophet Agai and said, Listen, while you are trying to settle in your own homes and make sure things are okay and cozy, the house of God remains in ruins. What are you going to do about it? The Spirit of God came and stirred the hearts. Stirred the hearts of Zerubbabel, stirred the hearts of the high priest, stirred the hearts of the remnant of Israel. And they, because of the stirring of the heart, began to put certain things into action. And that is what the Spirit of God is warning us as church to do. Stop thinking about building your own home. There's much work outside and I want to stir up the Spirit within you to do something about it. Secondly, if you want to really develop this passion for God, you got to develop deep convictions. Deep convictions makes you passionate. If you don't have certain convictions in your life, you can't be passionate about what you do. Whatever happens, let it happen. Let me take it on the way. That kind of a conviction. Yeah, that person is there and therefore I have no problems. I'll just, just go, go ahead and go on. This is just like that. I, I, I'll just go on and take whatever comes my way. Then you don't have zeal and passion that comes from the Lord. Passion and zeal of the Lord comes when you have deep convictions. When you build those deep convictions. What are some convictions that you got to build? If you look into the life of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, when there was a, a fiery furnace that was set and they said, hey, listen, this is the statue of your emperor. He is your God. You got to bow down to the statue. You got to bow down to this emperor. He is your God. Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego said, no, listen, 
this is what i want to tell you nebuchadnezzar our king in daniel chapter 3 verse 17 onwards shadrach meshach and abednego said we want you to know o king that our god is able to save us from the fiery furnace but even if he does not we want you to know o king that we will not that's deep conviction we will not bow down there's so much of confusion that is coming your way in telling whether we should take this vaccine or not and there are many ministries and ministers of god who are saying hey there's a chip within listen to this very carefully i want you to understand and understand the idea of what 666 is 666 cannot be confined to a chip because these are deep conviction matters the 666 and the image of the beast is not a matter of the external and temporal it is not enforced because of a chip that is that is implanted within you because we are really looking at certain things that are external yes that may be some external temporal things that may define this world human system but i want you to carefully observe the deep convictions like shadrach meshach and abednego will be the only way that you will be able to say no to the mark of the beast and yes to the mark of god in your life we want you to know o king that we will not bow down to the system of this world because there's a deep conviction in our hearts that we will not bow down whether we are having life or no life or whether i'm going to burn in the fiery furnace or no we know that god is able to save us but even if he does not save us there's a deep conviction within us on what the truth is we will not serve we will not serve we will not bow down to the statue to the system of this world deep convictions actually rise within us a passion a zeal i believe in deep convictions because deep convictions actually alter every aspect of your life what you truly believe is what you actually manifest if you don't truly believe and you don't really process deep convictions your actions are limited your expressions are limited deep convictions paul had deep convictions in acts chapter 20 he knows that when he is going to go into jerusalem he is going to be arrested and agabus the prophet comes takes paul's belt out of his waistline and he ties himself with that belt and he says the owner of this belt is going to be tied like this paul says yes i know yes i know but the task ahead of me is what god is wanting me to do that he says these words that needs to become deep convictions of our life in the season if we have to overcome the system of the beast that is already come hey the night is already here the day is passing by the night is arriving if we don't have deep convictions we will not be able to survive what is to come we will succumb we will fall down we will bow down to the evil system we will bow down to the beast but on the other hand god is wanting us to develop deep convictions and a zeal for the kingdom of god and i want you to turn your attention to uh, to acts chapter 20 verses 22 to 24 Can we all read it together now compelled by the spirit it's a spirit compulsion it's a zeal that comes with with a compulsion and a passion and it says in acts chapter 20 22 to 25 now compelled by the spirit i am what going can we all read it i am going to jerusalem not knowing what will happen to me there i only know that in every city the holy spirit warns me that prison and hardships are facing me however i consider my life worth nothing to 
me however i consider my life worth nothing to me that's the underlining conviction and deep conviction with with that deep conviction is the one that brings deep passion in the life of paul i consider my life worth nothing to me except that my aim my aim my aim my only aim is to finish the race and complete the task the lord jesus has given me the task of testifying to the good news of god's grace the task of testifying the good news of god's grace this is the passion this is the zeal god wants the church to have because we are really thinking about how can we survive within the four walls of our homes god is saying i have an aim i have a goal for you to accomplish that is beyond the four walls of your cozy life deep convictions of saying i consider my life worth nothing to me but my only aim is to accomplish what god has called me to accomplish allowing the spirit of god to stir our hearts into what he wants to do in the city and this nation and the nations of the world that's the call of the church if you are a disciple and if you are a community of disciples that's the call man your sicknesses will be healed your problems will be taken care your finances will be set right listen has he not taken care of you thus far he will continue to take care of you but you and i as a church of jesus christ have been gifted with the different gifts god is asking us to love one another and honor one another with love and that's the core of it apart from that have the zeal of the lord let it consume your hearts let it make you go beyond the four panels of your house to think about what is that which Christ Jesus is calling you to do deep convictions bring deep passion deep convictions and deep passion and zeal third important thing is that it brings deep frustrations when you really do something with all of your heart and you don't have a response you're truly frustrated you and i need to handle that deep frustration when you put your entire life and do when you love someone with all of your heart and that person actually says it's casual what's there deep frustration comes same is the passion for christ when you are doing it with all of your heart and you don't have your support of your coworkers you don't have a support of your your spouse or children when you don't have a support man it is too frustrating and god is saying when you have deep passion and zeal for the lord you also need to learn to handle the frustration that comes with zeal elijah he was a man of passion he confronted the prophets of baal he put to altars he said that which is consumed by fire from heaven he is true living god he was zealous for god he said let's prove it the zeal of the lord had consumed elijah he wanted to prove who the living god is the fire came from heaven and consumed the sacrifice and everyone fell down and worshiped jehovah as god jehovah is god and the prophets of baal were rounded up and annihilated that day and completely routed out and then after that he goes into fear and frustration because listen to this very carefully he is going and to deep depression and he is in the cave and the spirit of god comes once again to stir the heart of elijah to say elijah elijah listen listen There's much more work to be done Elijah don't resign don't go back into that cave 
because he worked with deep passion and zeal and then he got frustrated because when you are working there and things don't happen the right way for you when people don't support you when there's not response in the same zeal with which you work you get deeply frustrated and come with me to first king chapter 19 and look at the words of elijah that he spoke and it reflects on on what god wants us to handle for those who have zeal first king chapter 19 and verse 10 he replied i have been very zealous for the lord god almighty the israelites have rejected your covenant torn down your altars and put your prophets to death with the sword i am the only one left and now they are trying to kill me too trying to kill me too i have stood for what is right but they want to kill me too but god says listen i have kept 7000 more passionate people you're not the only one elijah don't be frustrated don't be frustrated don't be frustrated learn to handle the frustration that comes because of the passion you have I said we got to come out of this laid backness that that this this pandemic for this past one year has slowly imbibed into our hearts but we are concentrating on the four walls of our own homes and the paneling of our own lives and the spirit of God says focus beyond I want to do great things in and through you for which you need to allow the spirit of God to stir up within your heart about a particular need Jerusalem the walls are destroyed David heard the Philistine Goliath speaking and defying the armies of the living God and and that stirred in him a, a passion and said how can he defy the armies of the living God i need to do something about it the entire nation of israel had sinned and god stirred within the heart of moses and said god score out my name blot out my name and forgive them please there needs to be a stirring in your spirit but the stirring of your spirit can be sustained because you develop deep convictions those deep convictions bring about passion passionate people need to learn to handle frustration fourthly passionate people need to go into action passion alone does not help We got to move into action. We got to move into bold steps of action with the instructions of the spirit that comes from the spirit. Jesus he was moved when he saw the temple of the living God being turned into a, a den of thieves. He took the whip and moved into action and he cleared the temple and he said, "Hey, this is my father's house. This is a house of prayer. How dare you turn it into a den of thieves?" That's what God is warning us. Cleansing of the church needs to happen. And then it should be a stirring in our spirit when filth is found in the church, in the house. must be cleansed it needs a passion and the disciples saw jesus and they said the zeal of the lord has consumed them the zeal of the lord has consumed them look at paul he knew very well that he was going to be arrested and and prisons and hardships are, are his but he also knew that the task was not only to the gentiles but to the jews and to the and to the leaders and to the kings and therefore he said arrest me but i'm going to stand before king agrippa i'm going to stand before king felix a governor of felix i'm going to stand before caesar but i need to share the gospel with them and therefore he kept moving and doing and bold moves bold moves even to be arrested if because he's getting arrested and said i'm i'm going to ap- appeal to caesar so take me to rome take me to rome because his goal his aim was rome was experience the gospel rome must experience the gospel and if the way to rome is prison 
let it be. If the way to Rome is shipwreck, let it be. Or if the way to Rome is a viper bite, let it be. My focus is in Rome. My focus is in Rome. Bold steps will be taken when passion becomes action. Passion must turn into action. Passion, just sitting with talking is no use. Passion must move into action. Esther said, if I die, I die. It's okay. I'm going into the, into the courtyard and into the inner chambers of the king. If I die, I die. Nehemiah said, I want to rebuild. I want to do something about it. I want to do something about it. Sometimes this passion can, can lead us into misplaced action, which is unwise and that's the caution. Because we are so passionate, we just can't go and do what we want to do. I want you to listen to the instructions of the Spirit because these men of God who moved passion into action are people who listened to the voice of the Spirit. They moved in tandem with the Spirit. Our own misplaced action to the passion that God stirs can lead into unwise actions. Hold caution. Don't move into unwise actions. Hear the Spirit of God. If the Spirit of God says certain things that you need to be doing, just obey. God is going to use you. Move your passion into action. This morning, the Spirit of God has been speaking to the churches. He's not just speaking to our church. He's speaking to the, to the churches across, um, across the globe and saying, no pandemic has actually made you focus on the four walls and the paneling of your own homes. I am about to do something beautiful, marvelous in the season to come, which needs the zeal of the Lord. And that needs to be stirred up by the spirit within your spirit and needs deep convictions to be developed because without deep convictions, you will not be able to be passionate. You will not be able to survive this season. Is this deep passion can bring frustration when you don't have equal response or, or people coming by your side and giving hands and shoulders you can go into deep frustration learn to handle those deep frustrations and move into hearing the instructions of God and acting on this passion